Can you hear me now? Boom. Okay, good. Let's go further. Uh, creativity is the source of everything for me, and it's really nice, a lot of fun, actually. When people are creative, they are funny. They talk typically nice jokes and so on. Uh, why, why me? I try to put it here. So it was a kind of my boring life as a kind of zebra. <laughs> <laughs> so black stripe, white stripe, black stripe, and typically people ask, hey, what do you think life in university is, white stripe or black stripe? I don't know, it's a gray stripe or whatever. So I spent some time in industry, some time in university. I ended up uh, as a professor at LUT. Uh, and uh, frankly speaking, I have two dissertations uh, uh, on, on mathematics. I'm a mathematician. It never made me a euro. <laughs> So my biggest uh, incomes, uh, biggest uh, project, let's say, came mostly from working in industry and as a consultant. So that's the thing. So what I want to share with you a little bit about the, this fun of creativity and discuss a little bit and explain that uh, academic work, I don't know how much you are targeted at work in academia, want to have dissertation, associate professor, professor, and so on and so on, and how it is different to real life <laughs> a little bit and maybe creativity is one one thing that maybe highlights a little bit that it does not mean if you can prove what you did if it works <laughs> it's fine while in academia if it is not proven it is not ex it doesn't exist that is not exactly the case yeah i had some inspirational examples from the very beginning do you know why the bottle is on the roof uh, it's light yeah it's a <laughs> It's a, it's a, it was a very nice initiative uh, that happened in, uh, in, uh, in Bangladesh, as far as I know, and can fastly spread in like countries uh, where uh, monthly income is less than 10 euro, 100 euro or something. That was actually uh, literally lighten up faces. So a guy somehow with a little bit of physics, because you know this uh, this uh, change of direction of, of of light, you can accumulate more light. Of this. And and then you can imagine how much electricity bills could be cut with this, this device. So you don't need electricity, maybe or reduce it a lot. And literally, you know, it lighten up faces. So it's not a bubble. It's a bulb. Sorry. It's <laughs> it's really uh, even. Uh, fighting the waste uh, plastic plastic uh, plastic bottle uh, what is interesting is that was a uh, speaking of entrepreneurship yeah there was a, there was the initiative that ended up in a company beautiful name liter of light nice yeah so and you don't need to be phd to do it or you can spend phd on crafting your i don't know hundreds of papers raising age factor up to 100 and uh, Nothing could happen in real life, and then you can change lives of millions. That is pretty uh, impressive to my sense. But I will, I will, I will try to continue. Uh, that's possibly coming from maybe from Africa, when people have to travel sometimes kilometers to get some water, and they travel it in a kind of traditional way, with canister on the, on the top. And it is uh, maybe somebody says it's good to make your posture, but it's actually painful. So until somebody realizes that you can do it much easier. Beautiful. So instead of carry it, you can roll it. <laughs> yeah, and even 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 kids can do it without any 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 I don't know efforts effortless. And then I think there's initial benefits that quality of road becomes better <laughs> because you roll <laughs> roll it many times. I think it's super nice. Again, you don't need to be PhD. And again, about inter entrepreneurship, it was not just a you know a singing kumbaya together. It was it was a, a company and it's very nice uh, name again. <laughs> Hippo, but, uh, hippo roller, hippo roller, very nice, yeah, uh, another example, by the way, they're all in science called frugal innovations, this is topic in innovation, uh, you know, making, management, it's called frugal, and they creative, really, crea about creative, not about science that much so far, but I will come to the Nobel Prize level science, but right now, it's just focus on creativity, it's a kind of burning desire to make things better, to make, to make life better, but here we are traveling to Helsinki, so to say not necessarily you have to travel to Asia or to, uh, to Africa to find the application of your, of your, of your ideas or of your good uh, wishes to make uh, life better. This is Helsinki. Do you like this uh, bicycle ramp? Do you like it as an engineer? Uh, by the way, who are engineers in the room or trying to become engineers? Technical education, technical background. Okay, thank you. Yeah, brothers, sisters, <laughs> it's good. <laughs> do you like it? What do you think? Is it nice? Well, Helsinki, everything should be nice. Finland, quality is highest. Do you like it? Yeah, I, in a way, I like. Why you don't like it? Why do you think it's not nice, Maria? What is your feeling? Huh? 
It's a gray color. It's, of course, it should be pinky, right? So. <laughs> no, actually, what I don't like as an engineer is that, I mean, there are several, uh, several stands that doesn't work. This one doesn't work, this one, but they're here. So even if it is empty with bicycles and I am obscure pedestrian, I can bump into it and not happy. They're wasting taxpayers' money because taxpayers' money were spent to use it. So ideally, I'm coming already to the brain surgery with, on you <laughs> about creativity. Ideally, they exist only when I have bicycle. If I don't have bicycles, they don't exist. A kind of formula, a kind of science fiction. Look, several nice solutions. So solution number one, when you can literally uh, ex uh, get the, the bicycle stand out of the mother earth, yeah, literally, it does not exist. Because of gravity, it falls down when there is no bicycle. So no bicycle, no ramp. As soon as you have bicycle, you can extract the ramp. Nice. That is what is called ideal. It disappears <laughs> when you don't need it. Yeah, and it's one of the formula of creativity. I would say, or another solution I found searching the internet. Is it a is it a ramp or a bench? How do you call it? It's a kind of moment when we realize that we are really we have a really like a, a language inertia. L linguistically, we are programmed. If you say design me a, a ramp for a bicycle, you will be designing this ugly thing of pinky color or whatever color. But it always will sit in your head that you have to start with a ramp. And if I say design me a bench, you will design a bench in the park. But this is neither bench nor a bicycle stand. At the same time, I think it solves and solves a lot of problems because it disappears when there is no bicycle. It's becoming miraculously the bench for pedestrians and they could be happy. Do you like it? N nice, it's, it's simple. But I'm starting from the level of like secondary school and I promised I, I ended up with some uh, nonlinear differential equations because everything has, can happen itself. So uh, sorry for a lot of text, but before the lecture, I try to put together my, <laughs> the message Yeah, why it is difficult to invent. In the way, by the way, what is, what is really scary in university, in academia life? Creativity, not creativity, inventiveness does not, does not value it that much because you cannot publish a paper on something heuristic. Look, I invented a, 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 a solution to equation. It, should, it will be rejected because you cannot explain how did you get it. It has to be reproducible. So invention is an act, you scratch your head, and suddenly, <gasps> solution came. <laughs> so it is not systematic. It, it is coming like an enlightenment, and that is why it's very hard to teach. There are some methods, I will talk about them a little bit later, how to provoke your creativity. But in general, it's, it's great, it works in, in industry, it's highly appreciated, because if you can solve a problem, you are hired immediately, yeah? Uh, uh, but it is, in academia, it's a kind of, yeah, it's... <laughs> I don't know how to explain. Again, I, the, my, my, my bitter experience of publishing papers is like, yeah, if you cannot explain, if you cannot, if you cannot help the reader to come to this conclusion, it, it, it has no value because it's like a focus, focus, focus. You, 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 you took solution out of your pocket. So reviewers say, sorry, it is not a scientific publication. It could be a nice novel or, or you know, Instagram post, but not a publication. So this first thing. Uh, second, uh, it is very hard to invent in science and technology, high level, you know, in clean room, semiconductors, if you don't know science and technology. So inventing comes in, in, uh, in leaders of, of, uh, of, of technology uh, together with a bunch of physics and a bunch of technology. So it's not always like a bench in the park or, 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 or bottle of light or something. That is, that is the thing. But the drama is when we learn so much science and technology, we have an intention to apply it <laughs> because we paid for it. We paid for our education. We learned this bloody physics, uh, differential equations. So the first things that comes to our mind when we have a problem with, I don't know, with this chair, why we don't model of it because we studied it that much. So it's a kind of paradox. So the more we know physics and mathematics, the more we are capable of solving problems. At the same time, we are more and more sitting in a box. Yeah. And I will, I will show some examples of it. And second, I think, is, a, is a called thinking inertia. Because as I said, if, if your grandfather was sitting in, in this business, if your father was sitting in this business, if you are sitting in this business, then chances are very high that your <laughs> children will also sit in this business. A business means a frame, unfortunately. It's a good thing and bad thing. It makes you very highly professional in something, and at the same time, really framed. Yeah, and everything has inertia. Linguistic inertia, cultural inertia, professional inertia. Yeah, even Google search. You know, if you if you keep searching in Google, then sooner or later Google realizes that you are sitting in agriculture. And when you ask something that maybe you need a year out of the box, Google will bring you examples from agriculture. 
because you have been sitting so long time for this. And it is uh, even even Google is not <laughs> not holy, not saint in this case. A couple of examples of it, yeah, and maybe a little bit interactive. Yeah, this problem I like a lot. Very difficult mathematical problems. There are uh, eight candles. Can you see candles? Yeah. There are one, two, three, four, five of them are lit. So mathematicians could conclude that three are not, right? So I came to the table and I took out of uh, them three lit candles and one unlit. How many candles left? Any mathematicians in the room? Four. Good. A mathematician. Me too. Me too. It's no shame to be a mathematician. Who believes only four? Are there any other versions? The, the problem in reality is that there's no single answer. And single answer is only in university. Optimal solution. Yeah? Two. Why two? They burned. Yeah. <laughs> so there are two, two legitimate answers to this problem. Totally legitimate. One, immediately, four, uh, eight minus four is four. And as is eight minus four is four, but two are lit. They burn gradually. <laughs> people, people never happy to hear this solution because they will complain. You are kidding us. You are. You are <laughs> but it's is it it is is it legitimate? What do you think? If you give a little bit, if you sit in a box of here and now, if you sit in a box of primary school teacher who is teach, testing you arithmetic, yes, four is a legitimate answer. But if you Think, okay, what happens in five hours? They are burned, so we have only two candles left on the table. Agree? That is essential thing about creativity. And one more I like a lot, because my, my brother, who is a surgeon, he's a doctor, medical doctor, and he tested me, and I'm a mathematician, you know, two PhDs, and I was very proud of myself. And he started, okay, Leonid, let me test you. He said, okay, you know squaring, square, one is square, one squared is one. Agree? Okay, then he started asking me, two squared is, uh, okay, four. <laughs> Okay, and he kept having four squared is so great, five squared is 25, and 10 squared is, and then he asked me, okay, angle squared is, huh? Ah, good. <laughs> okay, that's, there are, are you a mathematician? No, that is the point. <laughs> because if you are a mathematician, then you say, yeah, and that is what I said to my brother, listen, go to operation room, because in mathematics, squaring for angles is not defined operation. So please, I mean, let's talk professional. And he laughed in my face. He said, really? I said, yes. <laughs> but when he told me, I was absolutely stunned. That is true. I mean, angle squared would be 90 degree. But because you have been sitting in a box, it is very hard to jump out of the box. And that is about, about again, about creativity. It's great to, be, to have PhDs in mathematics, <laughs> but be aware that it, it you know, really traps your creativity. Uh, and I'm coming to engineering examples because I spent some time in engineering. This is one of my best examples. I worked a lot with refrigerators, actually. I know everything about refrigerators. If you have any problem with refrigerator, call me. Yeah, but, uh, one of the one of the system I worked a lot was uh, was the uh, ice generator. Maybe in Finland it's not so actual because it's already cold. But well, in, in in countries like I don't know South Korea, it's a kind of standard thing now. You have to have ice generator. Ice generator is a device inside of a freezing department. And uh, 20 years ago it was like a plastic tray. You pour water literally, like pour, and then you wait uh, half an hour. No, maybe. 40 minutes, and then when it is ready, you have to extract the cube. So what you do, you turn it upside down and twist a little bit, and they fall down. But people are lazy. In America, they say, not lazy, but busy. So people are busy. They want a kind of push-button solution. So they develop such a Frankenstein, the system that sits inside of refrigerator and costs about 50 bucks. And altogether, it's a, it's a nightmare what is happening inside. <laughs> it's an aluminum tray, an aluminum tray uh, that is like it is here, and there is a, uh, yeah, uh, the water comes out automatically, of course, and then when it's frozen, and it's frozen, it is called a direct heating, not conventional heating because of air, but it is a, like a di direct uh, pipe of freon coming under the, under the tray. It is frozen fast, half an hour, maybe, like, and then uh, they're frozen in, so you need to extract it. And how to extract it? Huh? Melt it. Beautiful. So imagine outside of moving minus 15 in Finland, then in the kitchen plus 20, then inside of refrigerator minus 20, and then you have heater inside. 
I will repeat it until you laugh about it. I mean, what what a Frankenstein it is. Yeah, outside of kitchen minus 20, inside of kitchen plus 20, but then you build refrigerator to have minus 20, and inside of minus 20 you want a heater because the, the ice doesn't go out. Ah. <laughs> And it is how engineering work, how standard engineering work, because if you need something, if you need cooler, okay, if you need cooling, introduce cooler. You need heater, introduce heater. If you have moving, introduce mover. And so gradually the system becomes a Frankenstein, and this is a Frankenstein system. And this is, this is not a free one. This is that damn uh, heater inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like this emotion. I, actually, I sometimes I call this lecture about creativity like engineering stand up, because you show solution and people laugh about it. This is a beautiful patent of General Electric. I found myself. It is so nice. Uh, do you understand the point? This is like a symmetric tray. So water comes, then it is frozen, and then you turn it upside down and add more water. Yeah, like this is stand up and people laugh about it. everything becomes so simple so easy with so much recuperation of energy because water coming with room temperature it is warm so and then met, melt melts up a little bit the, the, the ice it falls down while it is being frozen in exchange perfecto <laughs> So beautiful, and I, I, I would keep comparing it to this Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, this, this is exactly what, yeah, like it, beautiful. And that is what, like a creativity in simplicity. And in, in a way, I'm coming again to the point, maybe a, a very small advice, the first advice of creativity. Don't be afraid to make very ambitious solution when everything happens itself, easily, itself. Its selfness is a point. Okay, one more example. Uh, you know, Soviets and Americans, they competed a lot in the space and they, okay, Soviets were the first to send Gagarin and then Americans uh, replied by sending uh, Armstrong to the moon, you remember? And uh, then uh, Soviets decided, no, we are not going to be the second on the moon, they sent the robot. And it was a robotic machine, pretty, pretty advanced technology if you, if you think of 60s. There were solar panel at top, there was a radio communication with Mother Earth and other things, but they had to have a, 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 a search lamp. And the search lamp in this time, there were no light emitting diets, so when it was like a vacuum bulb, I mean, sometimes you can still buy it, yeah? And that right like a, a month before the launch, they realized that we got a problem, not Houston and Moscow, they were, we got a problem or whatever. The problem was because it was pilotless mission, they were actually throwing the device on the a, on a, on a moon and acceleration was up to 15 G, it's too high and it could be broken. Because you don't need to be a material science engineer to realize that it's very difficult to bind glass and metal. They don't like each other. They're not so nice. So this is like a weak point and you have to do something. So Soviet Union used to be a country when the deadline is literally a deadline. <laughs> So you need to solve it. What, how we can solve the problem? This is a, also a bit different to a, a setup comparing to a university. Yeah, in, in, in industry, you have to solve it yesterday and solve it, please. Don't bring me proofs, solve it right now. And uh, okay, if I'm a mechanical engineer, maybe what I can do, I can, I can make an ANSYS model of it. I can try to optimize shape. If you are a control engineer, I can optimize, not to, let's say 15G, I can reduce to 10G. Material science, Maria, what, what we can do here? What do you think? Any ideas? How material? Pink, make it pinky, of course, material. No, pinky. <laughs> it will save, <laughs> and so on and so on. But it's okay, it's no shame, it's list of ideas. But the idea was, <laughs> I mean, again, uh, 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 so nice, so funny, that uh, do you know what is the function of this bulb, of the actual casing, casing of this uh, glass casing? What is the function of it? It, 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 it prevents oxygen, because if oxygen comes, it burns the filament really fast. You can do this beautiful experiment. I did as a kid, of course. I destroyed the lamp and put it in, uh, out, and after, I don't know, a couple of minutes, it was burnt, because it's super hot. It's like a tank stem, I don't know, and it's burnt. It's oxidized, that means burnt, yeah? So, right, <laughs> there is no oxygen in the moon. <laughs> there is a vacuum. <laughs> So no, you leave the damn thing off. You don't need it at all. Ideal. It's really ideal because there is no uh, device, but the function, the function is to maintain vacuum or to stop oxygen is, is insured. Nice. Could you imagine how many rubles or lives uh, was saved because of this uh, super simple idea? Nice one. 
Yes. Uh, what else? Yeah, and I'm coming a little bit gradually to, okay, you have to know a little bit of science. And here is this beautiful thing. Uh, in, in so many technical applica applications, you need synchronization, synchronizing, starting from transmitting of uh, signal from cell phone. It has to be synchronized. The frequency, the carrier frequency of your device should be synchronized, la, 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 la. Synchronizing, in, if you use a, a generator connected to the grid, it has to be synchronized. Otherwise, blackout could happen. And the pacemakers for heart, hope, hope nobody has it. But if uh, something happens that uh, they install a kind of electric pacemaker and has to be synchronized with the beat of the heart. So it's a pretty popular problem. I would reduce it a little bit to mining. In mining, when you extract something, your mining is your topic. So I prepared for you. <laughs> In mining, you do screening. In screening, you have a lot of stones and you have to screen them and typically what you you, you they're coming in tones so is the screen is really big and so what you do you have to shake it how do you shake it you put motors with offset and these motors have to be synchronized because if they are not synchronized it's galloping so they have really jump like all together and imagine a screen like this side so you have one two three four motors and they have to jump like this so they have to be synchronized now they typically do it they typically do it with chains and it's a nightmare because chains is a lot of waste of energy a lot of friction a lot of noise but otherwise we, you, you would have galloping because you understand there is in the world there is no no motors with the same characteristics they're always a little bit different yeah and here coming to most exciting thing if you if you set up this kind of ideally they synchronize themselves i think you're nodding maybe you know a little bit of nonlinear oscillation theory a little bit and uh, I would put it like this, Huygens, many years ago, was Dutch scientist, uh, mechanical engineer. He somehow has proven that if you put two, uh, two I call this called wall watch, yeah, wall watch together on a, on a flexible beam, and beam has to be flexible, they gradually become synchronized. This trick was, this trick was used in, in Switzerland by uh, watchmakers. They try to fool the customers, telling that our reproduct reproduction of is so good that we make a watches they absolutely synchronize, and they put a beam <laughs> in a in a in a shop window, and they put several uh, several uh, pendulum watches, and gradually they start synchronizing. I think I, I prepared a movie, but I think we should not waste the time. It's really amazing. There are like five metronomes, of course, Japanese reproduce it with 100 metronomes, but it's pretty impressive. You start of them, there is a, a little bit frequency offset and phase offset. But as they sit on uh, two cans of beer, that's very important. It doesn't work on lemonade, only on beer. Yeah, but then because there is a cross talk between them and they gradually start synchronizing, it's an amazing fact. And this fact came to, the, to, the, to, to several patents on, on making, synchronizing uh, um, screen, I don't know, screening, without anything. So under some conditions, of course, you have to have a model, mathematical model of it, or you have to write nice differential equations because uh, of, of several systems with a crosstalk. It's a beautiful part of nonlinear non differential equations. But if you, if you know it, so this is a beautiful moment when from the signs you get a principle that something in the earth can happen itself and then apply it, apply it to, 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 to real world. Okay, oh, what else? What else? Uh, yeah, uh, when we talk about instruments to support creativity, what is in the market, I would say, I, something I called intuitive or in physiological methods. What music to hear, what color to watch, what herb to smoke, I don't know, anything that make you your cre more creative. It exists. Yeah, there are some advices. And there are methods like uh, brainstorming, synaptics, lateral thinking. Don't let me go there because it's uh, mostly about psychology. I'm not going there in psychology. I'm an engineer. But what is interesting, there are some systematic methods, how to think step by step in order to generate longer list of ideas. I hate to say it is, it helps you to find a solution. No. But what can be promised is your list of ideas will be longer than of your competitors. And among them would be la 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 la. I'm mostly uh, trying to sell here the theory of inventive problem solving. Trees. Maybe you can, after you forget everything about this university, Maria and me, maybe if it stays in your, in your brain, that I think could be very successful. Trees, theory for inventive problem solving. It's a really nice methodology how to solve, how to solve problems getting out of the box. Okay, so that is strongly recommended. Uh, 
<laughs> I did not put it like a micro lecture. I think it's even smaller. It's a nano lecture. One of the instrument of creativity of, of trees is called ideal final result. That is what I said. Ideally, everything should happen itself. You start your design. You start your analysis of problem uh, from this. If you have vibration, how to make vibration killing itself? If you have overheat, how to make heat killing itself, its selfness? I've explained how it works, but I cannot help going uh, going to, to to ancient China <laughs> because if you are interested in Zen Buddhism, I think I'm interested in Buddhism or Zen Buddhism. Of course, you have to be curious to, to see different school of thoughts. It's pretty pretty nice. So Zen Buddhism is a beautiful part of Buddhism and is full of paradoxes. You should read it. I mean, it's, it's really beautiful. And the father of Zen Buddhism, Lao Tzu, he was Chinese opponent of Confucius. Everyone knows Confucius because he worked for government. <laughs> and Lao Tzu was a kind of, uh, I don't know, he was uh, uh, dissident. Yeah, he was always opposed and he always fooled around Confucius because Confucius was too like a squared in a way. So once here uh, there was a discussion about what does it mean to be ideal ruler, ideal manager, ideal rector. What does it mean to be ideal rector? <laughs> and Confucius wrote like, okay, he has to be very good at swording. He has to be very good in uh, in uh, in drawing five gracious uh, flowers. He or she is to be good at writing poems and so on. While Lao Tzu came a kind of paradoxical conclusion: ideal ruler, if people don't know who is he or she, but everything is okay. So let us talk about, for example, police, ideal policeman. What do you think? What is ideal policeman? Uh, <laughs> run fast, shoot right, very polite, speaks many languages, right? Ideal policeman is, I cannot see police, but there is no crime. In a way, what is happening in Finland, I like so much. Because you can hardly find a policeman in, I don't know, in Helsinki. In general, I was stunned. There is only maybe 1,000 police uh, officers in, 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 in Finland in general. 1,000 1, for the whole country. Unbelievable, yeah? But I never locked my doors. Never. For 10 years I have been living here. There is no crime. Interesting. What if you project it to engineering system? We need to design anything. We need to design heater. We need to design chemical reactor. We need to design a screen. So what if we start not from our thinking inertia, but for a kind of formulation, a mantra, ideally heating happens itself. Ideally screening happens itself. And then try to desperately look for, uh, for mother nature or mother science to help us what which phenomena could help us to make it happen. And that is the end of my nano lecture. <laughs> if you are intrigued, infected after COVID, maybe it's not the good, <laughs> not the good uh, metaphor. But if you're infected with knowledge, you can dive into trees and uh, and 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 see what happens. Uh, uh, there are mantras. Yeah, a couple of exam one historical examples I like so much. Uh, the history of uh, lighting, lighting, street lighting, and uh, well, very fast they realize that if you make an arc between two electrodes, you can have some light. But the problem was they burn, they are burning gradually. So you have to keep the distance between them similar. And that was a technical challenge for maybe for mechanical engineers. So you have to invent a device that would always keep during one hour the distance between the tips of electrodes exactly, I don't know, one millimeter or I don't know how much. And there were monsters like this, again, Frankenstein, they were patented. So they develop like, like a, of course, it's coming from Switzerland because it looks like a, like a, like a, like a mechanism. So with like a, like a clocks, they like it go, it gradually going together like this. While ideally there is no mechanism, but the distance is always the same. It was an ingenious patent of one uh, engineer of Russian origin. His name was Yablochkov, sometimes called Yablochkov candle. So what, what the guy did, he said, okay, if I put them parallel, the distance is always the same, but the arc is not stable. So he suggested to put some wax between. Wax itself, itself is burned or melted because of temperature. The rest is very easy. <laughs> so he starts the arc, arc blossoms, and then make a temperature, then wax, you know, going down, 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 and you have actually a candle, a pattern, the beautiful, beautiful solution itself. Again, compared to this Frankenstein, itself is super nice. Uh, okay, that was... <laughs>
uh, agriculture and you have a little bug that is a very small bug that is a big problem for for I don't know, for agriculture, for a reason. They, they invaded, they invaded in the country. So we need to fight it. And biologists say that we can fight them if we know the temperature of this little bug. Because we have an idea. If the temperature is a little bit different to the temperature environment, we can fight it. So for engineers, how to measure the temperature of tiny bug? Good, good, yeah. Are you an engineer? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah, that is, that is true. You can, of course, you can be so proud of your university no knowledge and you can do different type of methods, you know, laser, schmazer, whatever, to measure the temperature of tiny particle. But if you realize this is a problem, problem, that means too many, too many, I put them all in the glass and then measure the temperature. It will be average temperature of the bug with obscure thermometer. Nice. Yeah, and once I had this kind of lecture in America, and it was like a crowd of engineers in General Electric like you, and one guy said, yes, yes, I know how to solve it, okay, please. What I like about Americans are very positive. They are, wow, great solution. And I said, wait, wait, I didn't finish. I want to say that, yeah, and then you have to divide the value by the number of bucks. <laughs> that was pretty nice. Okay, uh, I have maybe really small amount, maybe four, uh, four, four minutes, because I have really, uh, unfortunately, a meeting at, at one. Uh, which example you like from my boring life? One example is a refrigerator, another is a drying machine, and third example is carbonated drinks. Because I have three examples, but only four minutes, so it should be very fast. Drying machine, refrigerator, carbon, yeah, it's very short one, really, carbonated drinks, yes. Okay, let me skip uh, drying machine. Let me skip uh, the fridge. Yeah, the company was... Um, <clears throat> yes, 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 drop it, drop it. You don't forget this, by the way, by quote of the protest, because he have stolen my idea and didn't put my name there. Yeah, uh, carbonated drinks. It's a GIA company, a very famous Italian Austrian company for packaging of, uh, of carbonated drinks and, 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 and food. And uh, this looks like a carousel uh, manufacturing. The thing is, there are two carousels. Uh, there is one carousel in which uh, you put water inside, for example, and then you drop, uh, you drop uh, 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 dry ice and it's become carbonated. Uh, capping happens in another room. So the bottle has to travel from one room to another room, being decarbonated. So you, you understand, like a couple of minutes, it has to travel from one shop to another shop, and then it is capped. It's called capped, yeah? But during this time, bubbles appear. So as a result, you have to put bigger, bigger dry ice uh, granules. And uh, they are even so big, they cannot enter the... <laughs> <laughs> the kind of the, 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 the bottleneck, and uh, also it is wasting of, of, of materials a lot. Yeah, capping. So, uh, uh, longer time, bigger granules, losses of dry ice. Yeah, so you need to uh, encapsulate. Because if you encapsulate the granule of dry ice, you can, you can controllably, you know, open it when it is already in the water after, I don't know, a couple of minutes. What is ideal encapsulation? itself itself so ideally there is no encapsulation but encapsulation happens it's a crazy paradox Lao Tzu, Zen Buddhism so how to make a capsulation out of nothing what do we have yes we can you have we have dry ice that is a CO2 in in in, in, in solid state and we have water because it is used there. So what I what I suggested, why we don't inca oops, why we don't encapsulate it with water, making just regular ice. So we make a capsule. It's really easy to do. So you just roll it through the through the water. It becomes it gains immediately the regular ice becomes encapsulated. When you drop into the water, nothing happens because first regular ice is melt, and after a couple of minutes, depending on the thickness of it, uh, yeah, you can you can really enjoy the carbonation process. Okay, and that it's so itself, so, so, so easy that uh, actually, uh, I don't know, they didn't tell me if they actually applied this method, and unfortunately it's a problem, then when you're consulted, they say, oh, great idea, go, <laughs> it was nice to meet you, and you never know, and what happens with LG, those bastards, they published 20 patents on ideas that I generated for them, so boycott LG products.
please don't buy anything from LG. So I think we are coming to the end of my nano lecture. <laughs> uh, creativity and Asian can be systematic. So it is possible to think on certain route in order to be more creative. Enemies fixedness or thinking inertia, or it is called non-epistemic uncertainty. We have to talk scientifically. Non-epistemic uncertainty, then you knew that solution exists, but you did not think you can apply. You knew that if you freeze water, you get ice. Everyone knew, but somehow you did not realize that it is so applicable in this case. And epistemic uncertainty simply didn't know it. So that is another story. Uh, any formal modeling, modeling is good, of course, because formal modeling takes you out of the background and uh, brings you to, let's say, to uh, takes you to abstract level. And trees is very nice. Ideal system is no system, but the function is performed. Apply. It's a lot of fun. Who is ideal lecturer? Students are very good at this. Ideal lecturer is no lecturer. <laughs> no lecture, but the knowledge appeared, skills appeared. Yeah. If uh, what is ideal master degree program? Great, because we are typically this. Oh, of course, we teach here mathematics, here physics, and here we have a professor two years to retire, so he will teach us how to make business with physics and so on and so on. While we should start from the end, what do we want? Ideally, we don't have master degree program, but students are hired, students have knowledge and skills, la la. So and then miracle could happen. Yeah. Uh, so uh, advanced professional knowledge could help you to apply creativity in in industry because there it is a big big plus. I think I think I'm done. I think I'm done. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.